Nigeria is not falling apart. Nigeria is not on the brink. This is Faith Complex, a conversation about religion, politics, and art, with your host, Ghazi bin Hamid. Hi, my name is Ghazi bin Hamid, and you're watching Faith Complex. I'm joined today by Dr. Gwendolyn Michael, Professor of Anthropology and Foreign Service here at Georgetown University, and author of the upcoming book, The Kofi Annan Legacy for Africa. Professor Michael, welcome to Faith Complex. Thank you, Ghazi. We've recently been hearing an increasing number of worrying stories come out of Nigeria mm -hmm. about sectarian strife. Right. What exactly is going on there? Well, you're hearing a whole lot about um, Boko Haram, about the Al-Qaeda wannabe. Um, those stories have captured the attention of the world because Nigeria is so important and because the, the whole issue of terrorism is so important in other parts of the world. But since 98, 99, there's been a conflict between the northern part of the country, which is predominantly Muslim, and the southern portion of the country, predominantly Christian. But it's not so much about religion. It's about power, and it's about money. What is Boko Haram? Well, it literally translates Western education is sinful, or Western culture is sinful. And it is a resistance movement. It's a castigation of the state. It is a castigation of Muslim rulers whom they think have been uh, corrupt, uh, haven't been alert to the needs of their own people. Boko Haram is taking advantage of a real feeling that um, we're being disenfranchised, we're um, being impoverished, more and more impoverished. That sentiment is what Boko Haram is capitalizing upon. But it's really a very small, element in the problem. Um, we tend to focus on it because Boko Haram has, um, since I guess over the last five years, has become much more outward in, its, um, in the violence that it's perpetrating. Um, bombings, uh, killings of large numbers of people. These have been confined mostly to the northern communities where they have greater access. Would you mind expanding on the violence against Christians specifically in the South? For mm -hmm. example, the bombings that happened over Christmas last year. Yes. Um, we talk about the North-South divide because right there in Abuja and in Kaduna, you have a dividing line that moves you further down into more Christian communities. Um, Boko Haram wants to portray the conflict as being a religious one. I said it was a power one. It's about resources but they have been attacking Christians to focus attention. They want to set Muslim and Christians against each other. And that's because they want to convince the northern communities, which are largely Muslim, that their fight is against Christians. But that is not the predominant belief in the north. And most of the northerners are against Boko Haram. One word we haven't mentioned so far is oil. Mm -hmm. Nigeria does, in fact, sit on large reserves of this sweet crude curse. That's right. How exactly is oil driving the conflict if it isn't an ethno-religious conflict? Well, you've hit the right word. Um, oil is sometimes a curse for many countries. But um, what we saw over the last 30 years has been uh, military control of the country. And under military rule, it meant the generals had major access to the oil revenues of the southern coastal delta areas. and so. Elections in 98, 99 brought a lot of that to an end. That heightened the tension in the northern areas. And you saw essentially a Muslim resistance to the possibility that they were going to be marginalized in terms of their access to the resources of the country. What we're seeing is tension about that. It just happens that those generals were largely Muslim. So this just isn't about, obviously, Boko Haram. No. The Nigerian government has to play a role. What they role is it to. currently playing? In the past, they were not vigilant. They were not alert to the feelings of um, marginalization in the north. That absence allowed Boko Haram to grow. Now, the government is it's, uh, on its P's and Q's. It is engaging in more hard security, but they're trying to get even smarter. They're trying to act on what they now know, and that is that civil society is the key. 
that ordinary Nigerians are the key. If they make it impossible for Boko Haram to operate, they can no longer operate. And they're moving in some smarter ways now. So that gives me a lot of hope. Essentially, the history and story of Nigeria has been that of Paradise Lost. But given the developments you were just talking about, do you see the situation actually stabilizing or do we see uh, taking some steps back into, for example, Nigerian civil war? No, no civil war. I'm an optimist. <laughs> about a year ago, I was on record saying um, Nigeria is not falling apart. Nigeria is not on the brink. I think that Nigeria is poised for greater success. The state is taking a role, a more informed role now. And so I think Nigeria is going to be more successful. Uh, and particularly when they get a hold of uh, Boko Haram, I think they're going to be much more successful than we've seen over the past few years. Thank you very much, Professor Michael, for Thank joining you. us on Faith Complex today. My pleasure. Thank you.